On this edition of Muskoka Central TV, we're going to look at installing some signals on a layout that's controlled by NCE DCC system. This section of track behind me has a main line which has two turnouts here, an interlocking as it's called, and the outer track here is the main, and you can either divert into staging or you can stay on the outer track and it goes back to the main line for continuous running. And also the inside track, it doubles as a yard lead as well as um, some switching further on up here. Uh, it doubles as a siding. So the great thing about this particular interlocking is that the two ends of it are in different rooms and the operators really have to pay attention to the signals to understand if it's clear enough to proceed. This is one end of the interlocking. As, you, it's, as it's approached from this end, you can see I put a signal tower in there uh, just temporarily, but that's where um, I'm going to have a signal mass probably on either side of the uh, track. And then we proceed around the corner and we have our first turnout, which goes from the inside siding out to the main. And then over there, we have another turnout, which goes from the main into the inner siding, which proceeds to staging, and the outer track goes back on a continuous loop. Okay, here you can see the other side of the interlocking. Uh, this is where it enters the staging. Okay, you can see the turnout right there this is the end of the turnout and the other signal mast will go just about this location here over top as you enter the interlocking and this track continues on into the staging section okay there's some yard tracks there those are the staging tracks so let's look at what's required in order to make this system work. Okay, in order to make the signal system work there's two things we need to know. We need to know where the trains are on the layout and we need to know the turnout positions. So in order to do that with the NCE system we have two components that we require. One is the BD20 which is a block detector. Um, it's the coil type and I'll show you a little later how these things operate. There's also lots of reference videos on how to install a BD20. And the other important component is an AIU01. It stands for Auxiliary Input Unit. Now this allows uh, the NCE system to feed back the information into JMRI. So these are two AIU01s here and there's also reference videos that uh, I'll put in the notes as to how the AIOU ones are installed. There's a series of dip switches on there that give it the address and it simply plugs into the cab bus which is the same bus system that all your throttles plug into. And then now we have to wire in the turnout positions and the BD20s into the AIU ones in order to do that, the BD20, um, it has four terminals on here. All we have to do is hook up the positions, uh, terminals 2 and 3, to the, BD uh, to the AIU01. So it has a ground wire on it, or ground output, and so that is the output to the BD20, and then terminal 3 feeds back uh, a wire feeds back into one of the 14 positions, all these orange wires, um, it feeds back into the AIU-01. When the uh, train or uh, a load is put on the track, for instance I'll use my uh, ammeter here, okay, then the loop is closed, okay, this closes the loop and it feeds back to the AIU-01 that a uh, train 
is in this block. So you can see the little uh, LED lighting up. This is uh, block number two on my system. So as I as I trip the current, um, the LED lights up, and that's indicating that the IOU01 is getting the information back there. JMRA is going to be able to find this AIU01 in the system and it knows whether or not a train is in this block. Now the other component that we need to know is the turnout positions. And I do that with just using a simple tortoise. Now any kind of turnout machine uh, would work that has some sort of feedback. Like a blue point also has uh, terminals on the bottom so that you could feed a frog, uh, route the power to the frog, but you can also uh, route the power to an AIU-01. Same thing with a tortoise. If you use terminals 3 and 4 or 5 and 6 I believe it is, that basically will close the loop when the tortoise is thrown and will feed back to the AIU-01 that the position of this tortoise. So two wires go to each tortoise or, or turnout motor or you know throw machine that you have and that feeds back to the IU01. So we assign the terminals to the various turnouts and the various blocks and then in JMRI it can find all of these and knows exactly the state of your layout. Okay, before heading over to Panel Pro, there's one little thing I want to mention. Um, it'll be easiest if we set the address for the AIOU1 uh, to 50. Um, in watching some of the videos, uh, they all, uh, setting up the addresses for the turnouts and, and the sensors, um, they all start with uh, using an address of 50 for the AIOU1 and then 51, 52 for any subsequent ones um, and then all your sensors are going to be in sequence. So in order to set it to 50 there's a series of dip switches here. This is all in the in the manual for the AOU1 and uh, th they're clearly labeled. This is number one on the bottom and then two, three, four, five, six. In order to get an address of 50 we want switch number one in the on position. Two is off three and four are on, five and six are off. Okay, and that'll set it to 50. It'll make it much easier once we go to look at some of the videos for the Panel Pro. Okay, I'm just about to, to install another block. I'm in the staging area here, um, which is the start of the yard, and you can see the end of the interlocking section which we are about to signal. Um, the one signal mast is going to be going in here, just in this area here, just before it goes into the first turnout there. Um, so, in order to install a block, um, I have to gap the rails so I can isolate it. Um, in this section here, I've cut in a uh, gap in both rails. Um, that's simply because um, out there is block uh, major electrical block four and this is block three once we're in here um, it's going off a different circuit breaker so I wanted to completely isolate the section out there from the section in here. Um, I've cut two gaps into the rail um, just using my Dremel tool and a thin cutter which is about 40 thou thick and then you can see I've taken a little bit of styrene and I just um, drop some CA into the gap, um, stick the styrene in there and let it cure and then we'll go back and file those off and cut them there. I just left them in there so you can see where the start of the gap goes and then this section um, this is going to have um, an insulated rail joiner here to make sure that this uh, this section of track that's going to be going here is electrically isolated from this rail on the outside and we go along and this is the other end of the block so I want to stop it right here before it gets into the double crossover and that'll be a separate block by itself 
So I'm isolating this outside rail. Um, in my case, that's the red wire, red feeders, I'll separate that rail. And I didn't want this yard section to be on that block either. So strictly trains that are in this section of the track, I wanted to electri electrically isolate. So I put two more gaps here so that it doesn't get any, so the engines sitting up here don't interfere with that block and anything past this gap here uh, is not going to interfere with that block. So now that I have that rail isolated, I can take this red feeder wire, it's an 18 gauge wire, and that's going to be fed through the BD20. I'm just going to loop it through here and then it's going to go to the uh, source, um, the uh, EB1 uh, block, uh, block protection. So. Okay, here I am at the track now. Um, this is above that section and we drop below. Okay, here's the, the feeders to that particular siding. Okay, so the this 18 gauge wire runs over here. It goes around the BD20, the coil, and feeds over here, oops, up here, uh, to a junction point which feeds into the EB1 block protector, okay? And this goes straight to um, the power source, okay? So my two track feeders from the Pro Power Pro. And then I have the two wires hooked up, number two and three, which feed up to the panel to the AIU-01. That wire goes up here. It comes up to the two wires over here. Sorry, uh, 360. For block 360, the two middle wires, the red and the green, that comes out of here, out of this side, and into the AIU-01. Now, when I put my amp meter on the track, okay, that, that creates a load, and then you'll see the little LED number two will light up. That's this block. Okay, so you can see it lighting up there as I put the amp meter on and off the track. So number two, the second LED from the top, indicates when the block is occupied. Now we just have to find that in JMRI. We have to find the signal for number two, AIU 50. 